Hello and welcome to another episode of Forkful of Noodles. I am Krish Mohan. A nickname for credit cards is plastics, and that's because that's going to put you in everlasting debt, floating around in your soul to create gyres of poverty, and ultimately, you'll try to recycle it, but forget about the interest rate, and uh, all that garbage debt just cycles back into the ocean of your own possibility and self-worth. But there is a program that's monetizing the idea of plastics, and no, no, it's not drinking water, although yes, bottled water does monetize plastics. The idea I'm talking about is called the Plastic Bank. Here's the basics behind the Plastic Bank. Third world countries have various issues with waste and recycling and also employment. Probably because Republicans are busy creating so many jobs for Americans that there's just not enough to go around the globe. David Katz, a Canadian, is utilizing the waste problem to have people in third world countries to pick up plastics from their beaches and waterways before it gets into the ocean and pay them for it. The world's first organization to monetize plastic waste. We are a global chain of stores for the ultra, ultra poor, where everything in the store is available to be purchased using plastic garbage. And we offer school tuition, medical insurance, communications, power, sustainable cooking fuel, high efficiency stoves, Sanitation, communication, and a whole product range, all available to be purchased using plastic garbage. This allows folks to pay bills, get sustainable cooking oils, charge their phones, pay for schools, and so much more. Right? But this seems great, doesn't it? Okay, so here is proof that when you combine two negatives, it doesn't make a positive all the time. The words plastic and bank shouldn't really be in the same sentence together, and here's why. The company that has taken the most interest in this project is Shell. Yes, the company with the most ironic name, considering a Shell is supposed to protect things, and this company is actively removing protections, like a frat boy trying to get his dick wet and just saying he's got a condom on. Well, Shell is supporting the plastic bank, and by supporting the plastic bank, they are able to pay the collectors and make sure that they get the right money for the plastic. So it's really improving their situation at home. I really enjoyed interacting with the people and seeing the benefits they were having, uh, exchanging smiles and fist pumps. Just happy people that are willing to make a change. Perfect. It's nice that they've got a mildly famous person to show how Shell assaults communities and then just calls it a fist bump. Shell has decided to invest in the plastic bank to help third, these third world countries because we've turned waste collection into a monetary system. So now the people of Haiti and various other countries are held hostage as Shell will increase its plastic production because the more plastic there is in the world, the more these people get to clean it up and the more money they get to make. Proving again that when you mix a noble cause to capitalism, it just grinds it up into shit so that it can burn it. And it does not care about the smell or, or even if it's vegan. Shell and ExxonMobil have said that they will be increasing their plastic production by 40% in the next decade. And they will leverage these people's employment as a reason to do it. Make the liberal hearts bleed so we can turn that into plastic so the people of Haiti can turn it in for cash. And that's the problem. The plastic bank put value on trash and corporations want in on that value. As you can see behind us, that's a that's an element of of every school that we went through. So them those sacks are 
put in, inside the schools and that's where they dispose of the plastic. And when they're full, we just come and pick, it up, pick them up, weigh it, and give the money to the schools for what they need. Here's a better idea. How about we use these ideas generated by David Katz and Boyan Slat to clean up the mess we've made and then stop making plastic shit to feed into the cycle of cannibalistic bullshit. The, this program co-opted by Shell makes it virtually impossible for us to decrease our need for oil and plastics. And with the rise in plastics and our future being tied into automation, the robot uprising will be to get the fuck off this literal dumpster fire of a planet we will eventually make. Okay, so I know most of you are ready to recycle a Coke bottle into a shank or a rope, but there is hope. Kamikatsu Japan is known as the zero waste town because it recycles everything. They are so serious about this that there are 34 categories for them to recycle into. It's been very tough in the way to gain the uh, understanding of the people. Of course, when they had to separate garbage into 34 categories, which is massive, it's really like just tough. And here we are complaining that we have like a blue bag and like a regular bag. All right, so I do agree that 34 categories is a bit of an overkill, but Kamikatsu it will be zero waste by 2020. This means that all of their garbage will become something else. and. That's how some of their storefronts are surviving. The town has what's known as a kuru kuru shop, meaning circular, where residents can bring in and take used items for free. There's also a factory where local women make products out of discarded items. We had uh, lots of like old kimonos or the old clothes or these flags not used anymore. So we asked all these grannies who really had the skills for the sewing. Then they made it into a craft like teddy bears or bags or what I'm wearing right now as well. It's made out of all these uh, fish flags that we celebrate and then use it for the children's day. Businesses all over Kamikatsu have incorporated ways to become zero waste. We are cutting, by doing the recycling, the cost um, into one third compared to when we actually burn everything. We are trying to focus more in how can we change our lifestyles to not to produce any waste. Even in this small town with only 1,700 people, everyone look at each other and they look after or take care of each other. So this kind of supporting system within the community really helped for the implementation of the zero waste. They are turning things they use once into clothes, teddy bears, all, I mean all kinds of stuff. Right? In Western society, it's looked down upon to get hand-me-downs, but in nature and Eastern philosophies, it's called being efficient. Hell, America is so against hand-me-downs, it won't even turn its dead malls into homeless shelters. The homeless should get fresh homes. So we might not need 34 categories to recycle, but a major idea behind zero waste is to reduce single use. Disposables is actually quite simple. My family has been able to achieve it in three steps. Number one, to simply eliminate single use from our lives. There is a reusable alternative for every single disposable item out there. Rediscovering them was a, an epiphany for our family. Now, this goes a little further than just recycling, because certain plastics can't be recycled. And because they are recycled, the other plastics that can be become hand-me-down plastics and they lose value. My city, for example, recycles or accepts all types of plastics. But there is only a market for very few of them. And the few that have the chance of being recycled are turned into a product that will no longer be recyclable. When they take a plastic container and turn it into plastic lumber, that lumber is no longer recyclable. So companies want to make 
fresh plastic to suffocate our waterways instead of something that your parents use to suffocate the rivers and streams with. They feel like this is the progressive way to murder the planet. This means that instead of using a paper or plastic cup, you use a ceramic one. You buy food in bulk and use your jars. This takes a little bit of an adjustment, but once you do, you'll find out that it's actually not all that hard. The reason why it isn't being pushed forward in our societies is because it's counterintuitive to counterintuitive systems. So, so it's actually just intuitive. Consumerism is built on the practice that it's convenient and helps ease your life for a little bit, but that's a really selfish practice. Because of your convenience, it means that someone else is cleaning up your trash from their water supply. And it doesn't matter that it's creating jobs. I mean, that person has the right to live a good life where their water doesn't have a plastic bag suffocating the life out of a fish they might have to eat. Look, torment taints all meat. Instead of using the systems that nature essentially handed to us, we rebelled like the whiny teenagers of a species we truly are and created a giant mess. And now we're not just trying to undo the domestic abuse we've dealt on the planet, but also the emotional ones we've doled out with unregulated capitalism and consumerism. That's been your fork full of noodles for this week. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, we are doing a little something different with fork full of noodles. Uh, it's very difficult to produce 30 minutes of content every single week with my touring schedule. Uh, so we are breaking up the 30 minute schedule, 30 minute episodes into three different parts. Uh, the reason for that is because I'm the only employee of this show. Uh, I write it, do all the research, film it and edit it. Uh, there's nobody else on staff to do that. So uh, with my touring schedule, it's very hard to produce these shows. Um, so basically, if you want to see the full 30-minute episode before it gets released, uh, which I will be releasing the full 30-minute episodes, you can, sub you can donate to my Patreon at patreon.com slash krishmohanhaha. Uh, if you donate to the Patreon, you will get early access to the full 30 minute episode um, probably every other week or every third week something like that but basically after the first part goes out so that uh, again is patreon.com slash krishmohanhaha so if you enjoyed this episode if you enjoyed this portion of the show uh, please share it with your friends or your enemies or whoever you think might enjoy this video I have live stand-up comedy shows coming up in Baltimore, Maryland, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, Asheville, North Carolina, Chapel Hill, North Carolina, Chattanooga, Tennessee, and Atlanta, Georgia. To see my entire tour schedule, you can go to ramennoodlescomedy.com. That's R-A-M-A-N, noodlescomedy.com. There you can get all of my stand-up comedy albums. You can subscribe to our email list and our Bandcamp page. Uh, and if you subscribe to the Bandcamp, you get some bonus, exclusive, unreleased stand-up comedy material every single month directly to your inbox. Uh, another way that you can help the show financially is by donating to the Patreon, like I mentioned earlier. So that's patreon.com slash krishmohanhaha. And if you can't donate to, uh, financially to the show, that's okay. A great way to help the show is by sharing. Sharing is caring and it helps independent media reach new audiences and grow uh, a little bit bigger. That always helps. Um, you can follow us on various different social platforms. Hit the subscribe and the like button below. And thank you so much. And we will see you on the road.